Hello everyone, today I thought I'd do a quick video here, although I've done a video, um, an in-depth video on Shell Cordovan before. I just had another uh, another example of the shoe and I thought I'd uh, you know, take advantage of the opportunity to, you know, to highlight this. So um, I'll put a link below to my other video on Shell Cordovan and what it is, but in, in short, Shell Cordovan is a very highly sought after and rare leather that's basically made from the hind quarters of a horse. And there's only, you know, two pieces, I mean, about, you know, probably about, about, about yay big, and two pieces about the size of a Thanksgiving dinner serving tray um, on a horse. And it comes from like the, the, the sides of the butt, I guess you could say, the hind quarters. And it takes like six months to tan this stuff. So if you were to take a, just a regular old Allen Edmonds shoe like this one, um, and if you get it at the full retail price in calf skin like this is, by the way, you can see the calf skin does have, see those fine wrinkles in it that calf skin always gets, okay? Although it looks nice, it does wrinkle, okay? That $395 or $425 shoe, just change the material to something like this shell cordovan, suddenly it becomes $695, okay? Now, I don't have an Allen Edmonds or Alden shell cordovan shoe to show you here, but what I do have, I'm going to show you something so that we can appreciate it. First of all, this is a Florsheim shoe, okay? Florsheim was a great American shoe company. They still make some good shoes, um, but uh, the shoe manufacturers um, in the 1980s and earlier made some amazing high quality shoes, you know, like on par with the standard Florsheim shoes were like on par with the Allen Edmonds kind of shoes, okay? Um, but then in the, the 90s, there was a competition from overseas, and most of all the shoe manufacturers started taking their shoes overseas, which is now, now why only Allen Edmonds um, and Alden are the only ones left making shoes in the U.S. But back to the Florsheim Imperial. There's an amazing website. I've learned so much from David. His website is vcleat.com. I'll put a link down as well. Uh, v is in Victor, cleat, C-L-E-A-T, uh, dot com. And by the way, that term vcleat comes from the style of heels that a lot of these shoes used to have on them you see this is the the v cleat it's a metal piece that would help to limit the wear on the shoe but from what i understand they could be fairly dangerous um you know this could be slippery especially when it was wet so but back to the shoe of course the size eight and a half d okay now do you see underneath that d is the width nine seven six two four that's critical that's the shoe's model number and david actually has on his website is listed a lot of the different model numbers um, and you know like the production runs so what this website tells us is that 97624 is a plain toe blucher plain toe meaning no cap toe okay you see this is a derby classified as a derby but you see this piece of leather uh, and when it's sewn onto the outside of the shoe like that makes it a, a blucher uh, so it's a plain toe blucher you'll see the uh, um, acronym PTB Okay, and we know that 97624 also tells us it's a brown Florsheim Imperial. If you see the color, this is not black. At a first glance, sometimes on a video, it may look black. Okay, this is known as Color 8 Shell Cordovan, uh, um, and it's a dark brown with uh, like a burgundy tones in it. So, next to the model number FG. F is the month in which the shoe was made. G was the year. The month, I don't think, is very relevant to us, but G is. So A would be year zero. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That means that this particular pair of shoes here was made in a year uh, ending in the number six. So it could have been 1976, you know, 66, 76, 86, 96, 06. We don't know yet. But another clue from his website is the actual logo. So if we see this logo here, the, the style of that logo, he refers to it, to, he refers to this style logo as the theater script. So according to David uh, on his website, and I think he probably knows the most about the biggest shoe nut uh, on the internet, or at least the biggest vintage floor shine shoe nut on the internet, they changed to this logo, he says on his website, after 1992. So let's call it 1993 or maybe late 92. But they started using this logo in 93 and changed it again in 97. So what that means is this shoe was made between 1993 and 1996 or 97, making it, of course, 1996. Now look at this. You see, there are folds there. You know, the leather obviously makes waves where you walk, okay? But there's absolutely no wrinkling in this shoe. And it's 22 years old.
Isn't that amazing? I mean, look at the condition of this leather, okay? I mean, it's obviously been walked on. Do you see that? Condition of the sole there, okay? I mean, it's got some miles on it. Still a lot of life left in this sole. It's a double oak sole, meaning double thickness. Okay, it's a Goodyear welted construction with a storm welt. See, the welt folds up, okay? And it kind of protects the shoe a little bit more. Look at the other one here. Isn't it amazing? Look at that color. Look at the smoothness and the texture. Okay. Right. I mean, obviously, these things are worn, so they must be very, you know, Shell Cordovan, one of its hallmarks is how strong and durable it is. Okay. I mean, look at that. All right. I mean, I really didn't have to do much of anything to clean these shoes up. I just, you know, wiped them down really well, nourished them, uh, you know, polished them a little bit. And I did purposely did not want to put a high, high shine on them. You know, I didn't want a ridiculous spit shine on these things. Okay. But anyway. Um, so one of the hallmarks of Shell Cordovan is that A, it doesn't wrinkle, B, it makes these big gentle waves like that, and another one is, can you see how around the eyelets here, okay, if you look at the way the, the, the leather, because of the difference in the tensile strength of this leather, you see it kind of buckles, I guess I would say is the best way to describe it. You know, versus if you see, because the calf skin is weaker, it's just smooth and flat, it doesn't do that, okay, here's another pair of... This is another pair right here of uh, older, right? Or should have been paired off. But these are just regular calfskin. You see, it definitely doesn't do this. See how it just lays, the leather just kind of lays flat versus the way it just kind of has those waves and rumples in it. I don't know what to call it, right? So, anyway, Shell Cordovan. I'll take these shoes actually into a little better light. I'll take these over to the laundry room here. Oh, just better light. Let's see if I can get some better shots of these things. Isn't that pretty? Look at the difference in the tone and color in these things. Just thought you'd like to see that. Uh, these particular shoes I'll show you. The uh, biggest problem with them here is the uh, piping, they call it, that edging, you know, has some damage on them, but I don't know why. Florsheim used like this green thread there. I thought that's kind of funny, but anyway, kind of a cool pair of old 22-year-old vintage Shell Cordovan shoes. One of the reasons it's so highly sought after. I thought you guys might like to see that. All right. I'll catch you guys later.